So I just watched Harley Quinn. Let's see if that pudding tastes sweet or salty. And don't you dare get the wrong idea or I'm going to smack this water bottle right upside your head. Oh hi! Welcome to So I Just Watched, the show that makes the deaths of Batman's parents look less tragic by comparison. I'm going to get so much shit for that, but I don't care. Anyway, let's look at Harley Quinn, a cartoon that brings the most famous DC animated original kicking and screaming back to the medium that she debuted in. That's right, for those of you who aren't in the know, and if I know comic book fans, that means none of you, Harley Quinn started off life as Joker's smitten kitten in the much beloved Batman the Animated Series before taking over DC's canon in many mediums, whether it be print, video game, or film, she's done it all, going from an infrequent animated supporting role to one of the hottest properties in just over 30 goddamn years. It's amazing to know what a skin-tight bodysuit and being in tandem with the most notorious and famous bad guy in comic books can do for your career trajectory. Now that she's free from the roost of both Suicide Squad and Birds of Prey allowing her to show that spunky, sweet, psychotic nature that many people love, it was a no-brainer that DC would want to capitalise on her popularity at its absolute zenith by giving us an animated series that focused on her as the beacon of their universe streaming service. It was promised to be unfiltered, uncensored and uncompromising with this eponymous show wanting to have Harley at her independent and riotous best. Well. Now that it's legally available on E4 and all 4 in the UK, I can finally take a crack at it and judge whether this maid of mischief has lived up to expectation and made Mr. J proud. Let's get this frightened cat out of the bag before it suffocates. The premiere Till Death Do Us Part is absolutely fantastic. It does everything that a quality first impression should, at least in this genre and audience demographic at least. Set up the overarching narrative for the entire series, facilitating building all the characters' motivations and directions for future growth, and gives us a nice balance of violence, comedy and tension to make you sit up and take notice. This ain't your father's superhero cartoon, from the 60s, 70s and 80s, oh hell no. This is a distinctively modern affair and shows its poison unflappable tendencies to do it. I mean the opening lines of... My fellow whites, let's raise a glass to this pyramid of money, the foundation of which was built upon our favorite pastime. Fucking the poor! <laughs> and... Party's over, you pieces of shit! This is my money now, so back to were enough to make this prude with a potty mouth raise an eyebrow, and it kept me hooked for the entire 22 minute runtime. DC knew they had to give the audience assurances that this would be unfiltered and unhinged from the start, and well, with a few F-bombs, bloody spectacle, and brilliant pacing and time skips, we got it. The build up to Harley's breakup with Joker, voiced incredibly by the vocal chameleon that is Alan Tudyk, was so well executed it made me want to root for her and get excited over what was to follow, as well as supplying beautifully animated action set pieces to boot. Oh, and also Poison Ivy being blunt sassiness and Kana and I live for it, it's, oh, it's fantastic. The goal of this episode was to make us sympathetic to the eponymous character and well, that was achieved. It all looked so good. But sadly, this phenomenal starting pistol ended up jamming on repeated firing. This is because if I had just broken up with the Joker, the Crown Prince of Crime, was full of self-confidence and was driven to show him who was boss, I'd have used the baseball bat I've just gained and wrecked Gotham something fierce, just to send a message to all villainy that I'm not going to bend over backwards for you anymore, and I am a real threat. What does Harley do to showcase this? She crashes a Legion of Doom bar mitzvah, beats up a sexist villain whose only threat is his goddamn libido, and steals the Batmobile for a joyride. Wow, how rebellious, self-righteous, and just downright awkward is that? They take this character and make her overwrought and petty to where after four episodes of seeing her being belittled, talked down to, and insulted, I lost hope in this series ever making legitimate progress, because if its slow-burning build is going to continue to be this tedious, why the blue hell should I even bother? 
The second episode, The High Bar, takes away all the steam that the premiere had spouted by throwing water directly onto its fire, making me feel uneasy and devoid of cheer at seeing an encyclopedia of DC villains be siphoned into a funnel of ineptitude and self-parody, all while a group of horny preteens and kite man of all people made Poison Ivy intentionally look and sound like the only sane, logically thinking person in the whole goddamn canon, whilst everything falls flat and feels out of place around it. It's thankless draining and just an awful premise that firmly entrenches this show into its adult comedy niche. Let's make things awkward and hope you'll laugh with it! I bloody didn't, that's for sure. And showcasing so many villains at once, even briefly, has its flaws, because if I was going to watch on and they appeared later, I'd not be able to take any of them seriously, and that is a crime. Sure, it's meant to be a comedic thing, seeing them in a non-threatening setting, but oh, it makes them so weak I could push them over and I'm the weakest bitch in the world. Also, Harley, meanwhile, goes from ready to take on the world into a bitter breakup mode, replacing her driven desire with whining and cynicism to where even I have to question her motivation at this point, which should not be happening in the second episode of the goddamn series. Thankfully, the third episode, So You Need a Crew, does try to remedy this by giving Harley a direction to go in and set up a crew of her own. And it also helps the fact it drops a massive sea bomb. No, not the shit one. The the, um, lady part one. For good reason as well, because it's meant to highlight a point that I'm going to get to. But it then proceeds to step into that shit and censor itself for the rest of the episode's duration when it comes to language and appropriately Maxi Zeus's junk. Now let me remind you, this is an adult comedy that is on air in the UK at 11.35pm. This is past the watershed and behind parental controls online. There is no need to censor any of it. You tell me that it's uncensored, unfiltered, uncompromised, bloody hell. This was a death knell for that immediately. It also took interesting villains such as Dr. Psycho and Clayman and hammed up their eccentricities to the point of nauseam where it just made them irritating and borderline unwatchable. On top of that, the main point that the episode had was drilling a strong feminist social commentary about sexist and misogynistic villain hierarchy right into the sides of your temples. It's more loud and proud virtue signaling than subtle and earnestly utilized. Hell, at this point, a dose of subtlety would be appreciated. But no, this is a typical adult animated comedy and it doesn't even know what the hell subtlety is, so it played its cards predictably. Way to play to your woke audience demographic, where a bit of swearing, violence, sex and morality boosting is what's necessary to be considered entertainment. It may have provided exposition and an explanation as to why Harley has been ridiculed so much up until this point, but it doesn't feel gratifying. Especially when, at the end of the day, the minimal progress made in 22 minutes, much like its predecessor, isn't satisfying even with justification now in place. This is something that the fourth episode, Finding Mr. Wright, firmly sets in concrete. Instead of making the kidnapping of Robin feel like it's something momentous for our heroine, or should I say villainess, it's actually akin to calling the teacher mum at school. It's puerile, trivial, and unbelievably embarrassing. It's an indication, in terms of a moment, of just how far from the tree in three episodes my excitement has drastically fallen because it was not enjoyable to just watch another episode and go, oh wow, the main conflict is Harley being beaten down and insulted again. Can they just give us something new? I will say this though, I was laughing that King Shark turned into a media savvy tech guy and they tried to set up a, uh, a quote unquote villain dating profile to find a nemesis. That was unbelievably well written and I'll give it some credit there. But that goodwill evaporated very fast as more awkwardness was spread over a thin veneer of threat and power hungry gamesmanship and well, it tried to make itself something bigger and branch out into the wider world but it bloody well didn't show like it. It wasn't that enjoyable. And while Harley and Ivy's crew and operation does grow, there is a progression there, but I just sat wondering why does it all feel so soulless and empty? It's because they've beaten the same drum three episodes running with slightly different sticks and expect no one to notice. Well, I bloody did, and I'm calling them to rights on it. 
And after kicking things off with an all guns blazing start, why has everything been compartmentalized and restrained to where I can barely muster excitement with it? Outside of Poison Ivy's quips, which never get old, the honestly great voice acting, and the fact that Gotham's villains and their whole society is a biting satire of modern media culture. All of these things, plus the action set pieces when they are shown, are fantastic, but the overall narrative structure and storytelling package that it's wrapped up in just sours on it all. It can't even move a muscle, and this is especially the case for the characters too, because all of them are just stuck in first gear. They cannot move out of the basic form that they've got, and it's just so boring after a while. I understand that DC wants to do this to stretch the narrative out over the long haul, to make sure that watching Harley gradually climb up the ladder is worth the time. But if they had actually fleshed things out and made it a little more exciting and interesting, then maybe I would have enjoyed this more. But they were handled with no sense of care or effort, meaning it just fell on deaf ears at the end of the day. So after all that, would I recommend Harley Quinn? I have heard that it does get better from here, but based on what I've seen, I'm not gonna give it the benefit of the doubt. It's bad. As Harley Quinn is one of my favorite Batman characters, I was actually anticipating this quite a bit before going into it, as I was hoping for another great representation of her in media. But sadly, I was extremely disappointed to see that a premiere that held such confidence, composure, and generated a lot of enticement was left floundering under a collection of underwhelming, overly self-aware, and mind-numbingly painful follow-ups. I fully understand why they did this. DC did not want to overload the viewer with a lot of over-the-top action and violence early on to make sure it hits big when it needs to, and the fact they didn't push Harley too fast means that people can connect with her sympathetically over time. That is a good thing, but they pulled the rug from under you so drastically and dropped these characters into fruitless and awfully mundane situations to where it just didn't feel redeeming. And having the mantra of putting Harley down as the main plot point and conflict for every single episode was incredibly repetitive and it sapped the energy and lingering patience right out of me. And you can't rely on the same narrative and storytelling conventions constantly. You need to throw swerves in to keep interest high. But it wasn't there, it was bluntly missing and the characters were either one-dimensional, somewhat entertaining, or either just lingering round with just insufferable tendencies that made me just not want to sit around them or see them anymore. And the whole long-term plan that the episodes were putting together, if it was gonna go at the same speed as 2D Sonic walking through water, I will take a pass, thank you very much. It, I can say that it has its foot definitely on the gas but it's got its gearbox stuck in neutral and highlights its lack of momentum that just strangles it to death. After four episodes, I was expecting a hell of a lot more traction to be gained. And instead, I got scraps to work with and huh, it meant by the third episode, I was willing to throw in the towel. The reason why this utterly annoys me as much as it does is because DC promised that this would be Harley off the leash and ready to raise hell. Yet yeah, what we saw was a bleached and multicolored puppy being held back by its owner to be dutifully trained. And well, it wasn't the most exciting animated viewing as a result, despite the flares of quality trying to push through its dense foundations. And for a cartoon about the insane, twisted and bouncy Harlequin, in my opinion, it was neutered right when it was ready to pounce. And that's quite sad to see happen. I've been Freddie Thomas, you've been people watching, this is the CC Network, and I will see you all next time.